Well, hey folks, Tim Bot here at the Steam Labs Community Makerspace. If you've been following along, you know that I've been working on a project where I'm using parametric modeling and CNC milling to create this sweet desktop arcade cabinet set for the kids in the Unity game development program. It's coming along pretty well, don't you think? Uh, so we're down to the cosmetic touches, which are going to include a light-up marquee, a slick control panel faceplate, but we're going to begin with a simple cut, the inside bezel. This is going to move us from working in wood to working in acrylic. In doing so, we're going to have to take a look at some of the ways that CNC milling is different between acrylic and wood, starting off with a look at what you don't want to do when you start milling acrylic material on a CNC machine. Let's head on over to the CNC room and take a look. Let's go. Okay, we're looking at some of the differences between milling wood and milling acrylic and the unique properties that you need to know about in order to have a good cut when you're cutting acrylic with the CNC machine. So right now, first of all, let's take a look at the clamping technique. Now you may not have thought too much about clamping and why it's important, but when you get into working with acrylic, you're gonna find that these things can make or break your cut. Taking a look at the layout we have right here, this is going to run into several problems. Now, this has been clamped off as though the material were wood, right? So we've got some nice centered clamps here. They're good and tight. There's no problem there. Um, but the issue that we're going to run into here is related to the fact that uh, acrylic does not have the rigidity that wood does. As a result, over here on this edge, this thin material, see, you know, if you just stick your finger in there, how it kind of flops around like that. And what this is going to result in is that as your, as your tool makes its way around this edge here, and especially if your depth of cut is set too high and your speed's too low, as it reaches the edge, this is easily going to start raising up. You can see how, how easily that could happen, but you might not think about it when you're clamping off. And as that raises up, what's going to happen is that the, the bit is going to grab a hold of more material and it's just going to gouge pieces out of that. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So take a look at this corner that we see right here and you can probably see that it's chewed up pretty badly. And the reason why is exactly what we're talking about. This actually came off of the clamp that we see behind us here. And as you can see, the edges have lifted as it's crossed this area where there's not enough support. And as soon as that happens, the angle of the material causes deep gouges to be cut out of it. You're gonna get a really, really chipped up, nasty looking edge. That's what we want to avoid. Okay, so what would we do differently in this setup? Well, there's a few things and they mostly have to do with having enough strength around the edges of your cut when you're making profiles. So first things first, we probably would want to trim off our spoiler board. Now, why would we need to do that? Well, basically because we need to get another clamp in here along this edge to secure down this area and to secure down this area. Now this area is not going to be as big of a problem because the, the tool, if we, if we create our offset close to the edge here, the tool is not really going to get over into this area too much. So we've still got a good degree of strength right here. But on this side, well, two things. First of all, we probably want to allow a little bit more clearance along this edge. And the best way to make sure that we do that is by clamping off along this edge. So you can see if we're going to, if we're going to get a clamp into this rail or possibly even to the far rail here, we're going to need to trim that spoiler board off so that we can secure off on this side. So at the minimum, we probably want to leave like a good three to four inches of material along this edge here so that we can clamp off strongly on there and avoid this problem of weak edges flopping around on us. Now this means that our clamps may be shifted left here instead of being exactly centered up. But if you think about it, you want to clamp off against the material that you're actually cutting, not this, this off-cut material that we've got over here. So think about the size, and that brings me to my other point, 
One of the things you're definitely gonna wanna bring in with you when you're doing this stuff, measuring tape, simple measuring tape, right? Because with this, you know, keeping in mind my, my dimensions, I can measure off against this and figure out where I need to clamp for maximum strength. That brings me to my other point, which is kind of a low tech solution, but you probably wanna bring your, your sketches in with you, right? Just so you can remember, I'm looking at this, I'm seeing like 55 centimeter cut is what I'm trying to make here. So if I measure that off, 30, 40, 55 centimeters, right about there, uh, I'm gonna be able to clamp off in the correct area rather than running into this kind of problem with incorrect clamp placement. So let's see if we can redo this setup in a way that's gonna make for a more successful cut. Now there's a couple of software considerations we need to keep in mind as well. I mentioned very briefly the depth of cut. We're gonna see how in the B-Carve software we can adjust that to make sure that we're not cutting too deeply, too quickly when we're working with acrylic. Well, all right, my friends, we are back. And as you can see, we have now got a proper setup. Uh, we've clamped off a little bit differently than the last setup that you saw. This is a setup for acrylic. Now the main consideration we want to take note of is that we've trimmed off our spoiler board so that we're able to get another clamp in along this left hand rail here. Now this is going to be very, very important because what we're trying to do is avoid having the material, which is not as rigid as wood, raise up as the tool moves along its path and cutting a profile. The other thing that I want to do is make sure that I set my origin point in enough from the edge that I'm not going to run into problems with like moving around and warping as it gets too close to the edge and tries to move that material around despite the way that I've clamped this off. So I typically, uh, this, is, this is like a three millimeter acrylic um, and typically I'm going to want to leave at least four inches around the edge. So if I'm measuring off, uh, I can see I've got about four inches right about to here and in the other direction my four inches, you know, puts me right about in this area. And then I want to make sure that I'm going to have enough room inside of here with that clearance for the material that I want to cut. So in this case I'm cutting a 55 centimeter uh, piece here for my bezel which uh, puts me right around right about the edge here and this is what I want because like if I take a look at where my rail is and where I'm clamped off on it's very very close to my edge profile that I'm gonna cut here which means that I'm very close to being at the maximum strength point for this cut that I'm gonna make. So I'm essentially gonna make sure that I zero off at about four inches by four inches, which puts me pretty close to this left hand rail. And the edge of my cut is gonna be pretty close to my right hand rail, which should make for maximum strength in retaining the, this material close to the bed. The other thing that I have to consider here is uh, when I zero off my Z depth, so we've got two options. You can either zero off against the bed itself or we can zero off against the material. If we zero against the material, my strong suggestion would be to zero off from somewhere around the center of the bed rather than the edge here. You're gonna to wanna to go a little bit inwards on your material. And uh, the reason for that is basically that uh, the areas that you've clamped down to will actually be lowered slightly from the rest of the material here. So we've got very strong clamping on this side. I'm probably gonna zero off somewhere around this area to make sure that I'm gonna get enough depth in my cut. And I don't have to worry too much because I've got some good clearance underneath with that spoiler board. I'm not gonna be cutting into the bed of the CNC machine itself. So with those things in mind, we just have to look at the software settings. Cool. Alrighty guys, so we are back here at the software and uh, we're looking at how we can set up this job to get a good cut 
and acrylic. And there are a couple of considerations that you need to know about. It's not the exact same as cutting wood. So let's dive on into VCAR, the CAM software that we are using, and let's take a look at our settings. So first off, here we are with our job. And I can see that I've got uh, my DXF brought in properly from FreeCAD. Uh, let's take a look at some of the job setup that we have to do. So first off, the job type. Well, this is a single-sided job. We won't be flipping the material over in order to cut anything on the other side. We're pretty much just doing straight-up profile cuts all the way through, given that this is a bezel we are creating for our arcade cabinet. Now, there is a few considerations in the job size that become important. So if you can remember, the bezel size that I'm going for is 550 by 370 centimeters, um, or millimeters, I should say. But uh, what I've done here is I've added a little bit around the edge because these settings are referring more to the material that I'm loading onto the bed of the CNC machine. Now, I don't need to know the exact measurements, but I do need to leave a little bit around the edge because otherwise, when we go to generate our preview, uh, we won't be able to see our toolpath being cut because um, it will basically be off the edge on our outer profile. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Uh, the other consideration we have is our zero position. Uh, I'm going to specify the material surface. I'm going to be zeroing off against the material itself so that I can get my zero depth from the area of the material that I think is the most likely to be raised up a little bit off my spoiler board um, simply due to, to bowing caused by the clamping. Um, and then right down here, uh, be careful of this XY datum position here. You may find that the software has checked automatically for you using an offset. You're going to want to uncheck that. Otherwise, you will create the origin point for your X and Y on the CNC machine. But then when you go to run your job, it's going to actually treat that offset as the origin point and it will actually travel over and you may find the, yourself getting a, a, a very unusual cut if you don't catch it in time. Usually you will catch it in time and you can stop it and correct that. Um, but save yourself a little bit of trouble by unchecking the use offset. We're going to use the bottom left hand corner as the point of origin for our cut. Uh, the other thing that's really important in the job size here is the thickness of material. You may find that by default it wants to do something like 10 millimeter, but uh, uh, we've actually measured with caliper our acrylic material. We know it's three millimeter that we're dealing with. So I got to plug that right in here. So we've got our job size information in there with a little bit of offset. We are specifying that we're going to zero off against the surface of the material rather than the machine bed. We've made sure that there's no offset being used in the datum position. We're pretty much good to go and we can hit OK. Now, what you may find is that your job is actually pulled up right against the bottom left hand corner here. In order to give a little bit of offset on the material, what I've done is basically selected all of my vectors. Then I go over to my transform mode tool here. I click that and you can see that you now get this little movement icon that you can use. And what I've done is just pulled the whole thing over all of my vectors and uh, created a little bit of an offset between my datum or my bottom left hand corner here so that when I go ahead and click on my preview I'll be able to see that uh, this outer profile that I've created uh, actually works inside of my preview here. So let me go back to my selection and I'm going to select on my outer profile that I've created here. I'm going to close that preview and you can see that uh, we've got our options here, profile tool path. So I've called this one the bezel outer. So let me double check that and let's take a look at what we've done. So first off, the cutting depth. You're going to need to set the thickness of the material again. It doesn't automatically take that from your document settings or your material settings. So I've gone ahead and plugged in the three millimeter, the start depth, you're pretty much always going to leave it the zero millimeter. There isn't a whole lot of reason to change that. Um, and then since this is my outer profile, I've left it on the default settings 
of uh, outside right on the machine vector. What that means, as you can see from the little diagram here, is that it is basically going to move my, my milling head to the outside of that vector and cut along the outside. Now you see why we needed a little bit of clearance um, between our outside profile and the edge of our material here. Uh, so let's take a look at the, let's go ahead and calculate this. Take a little look at the preview. So I'm going to bring the speed all the way down and let's take a look at what's happening here. Looking pretty good. And you'll see that this is actually going to perform about three passes. And I've got some nice clean tabs inside of here. Now, how do we, how do we ensure that this milling head is not just going to try and do it all in one pass? Because if we leave our tool settings at the default, that's exactly what it's going to do. And if it tries to do that, it's going to plunge deeply into our acrylic and probably shatter it. So let's go back to taking a look at our tool path here. And if you take a look at the tool here, it has chosen a quarter inch end mill for me, which is pretty standard. Uh, that is actually what I'm going to use. But if I use the default settings, that's definitely going to cause problems. So I'm going to need to edit my tool here just a little bit, particularly the area that we want to look in is the pass depth. By default, this is going to be about 0.12 inches, which is going to be pretty darn deep. That's going to plunge the tool directly, com like completely through our acrylic material. It's okay for wood, but it is definitely going to mess up this other material that we're using. I want to make sure that this is never doing more than a one millimeter cut. So if I calculate one millimeter in inches, I wind up with 0 0.04 inches. So that's what I've plugged in here. Let's say we change it back. Let's say we, we go back to the default settings here of 0 0.12 inches and I hit OK. And then we recalculate that outer bezel. Let's take a look at the difference in the preview here. So I'm going to reset the preview and let's see what happens. Boom. You see that one pass. It is going to plunge completely through our material. That is way too traumatic for acrylic. <laughs> it's okay for wood, but with the lack of rigidity and the extra brittleness that we get in acrylic material, that is definitely going to mess things up. So let's change it back to the proper settings here. I'm going to close that out. I'm going to open up the bezel outer and go to the tool settings. And I'm going to change this back to 0 0.04 which should give me a, no more than a one millimeter depth cut each time. What we're after here is that the tool will do more passes at a higher RPM rather than uh, uh, fewer passes at a deeper cut. So hit the OK. I'm going to recalculate that. Let's go back to the preview and just make sure that we're all good there. We should see about three, since this is a three millimeter piece, and we've constrained it to a one millimeter plunge depth. Yeah, yeah, that is looking good. I like that, nice. Okay, so let's kill that preview because there's one more setting here that's pretty important. We're gonna go back to uh, our bezel here, and the last setting that we need to look at is the uh, tabs inside of here. You do not want to leave this with no tabs, especially when you're working with acrylic. You don't want that thing moving around. You need to leave enough strength along the edges that it isn't going to move upwards, get in the path of the end mill, and then have that end mill just carving chunks out of our material here. So if you'll notice, if we go to the uh, first thing you want to notice on our tool paths here, uh, tabs to tool paths is that we've set the thickness of the tabs to one millimeter. Well, why? Well, because typically with wood, these tabs are actually going to be three millimeters or thicker, which means that we wouldn't actually be cutting tabs. We'd just be leaving full stock material in here if we left it as is. So first thing we have to do is bring that down to about one millimeter. That will be strong enough to hold it in place. 
Then I'm gonna go into the edit tabs. And as you can see, I have generated two tabs for each corner. So two, four, six, and eight. And I have positioned those tabs near the corners. Why? Well, because with acrylic, those corners are one of the biggest points of vulnerability for that material kicking upwards. So we're gonna reinforce them a little bit. And then for a little bit of ex extra security, what I've done is just clicked in the middle here to add one more tab along the longer travel paths that our end mill is going to do. That's looking pretty good. So I think we can close that out and uh, we can pretty much calculate that out. We'll preview it one more time just so we can see everything that we've done. There we go, there's the first pass, second pass, and then on the third pass, it should leave those one millimeter tabs for us. Let's see. Yeah, yeah, that is looking, that is looking pretty darn good. Let's make sure that we've done very similar settings for our inner bezel profile, uh, but there is one thing at least that we're gonna have to update inside of there. So let's close this out. Let's take a look at our bezel inner. And so right here, you can see that, you know, once you've set it one time, it's smart enough to know the material that you're working with, that you're probably going to use the same material thickness for all of your profile cuts. And so it's setting uh, three millimeters for us automatically, which is great. Uh, if, you, if we wish, we can go to the edit um, panel for the end mill itself, but you can see once again, uh, it's guessed that we're going to be using the same settings and so it's already set the 0 0.04 inches for us which will give us our one millimeter cut depth. That's okay. The one thing that we need to change here is inside the machine vectors and you'll notice that we're not using an outside path. We're using an inside path. Why? Well because this is the inner lip of our bezel. If we set this to the outside then the width of uh, the quarter inch width of our end mill is going to actually cut out the inside of our bezel here and we don't want that we want that material to remain intact so instead we set it to the inside left and as you can see this is going to place our end mill along the inside of our vector what do we mean by that well the easiest way is to take a look at the preview so let's uh, go ahead and calculate and then we'll take a look in the preview and you'll see exactly what I mean. That tool is going to come in and it's going to travel along the inside of this vector, ensuring that we're not cutting away material that we need for the bezel. So let's check it out. And you should see about three passes once again. And boom, there we go. So that is looking pretty darn good. Now we will have a little bit of manual work to do um, to, to take care of these tabs, which is a little bit annoying, but it's a lot better than having our material kick up and spoiling an entire sheet of acrylic here. So if we've done everything right, we should be in a pretty good position to take this on over to the CNC and uh, plug it into the master copy of VCarve that we'll use to generate the G code. Let's pick it up in the room. Okay guys, so welcome back to the CNC room. I feel like we are in a pretty good place to start our cut. So the first thing that we have to do is set our XY origin point here. Now if you remember from earlier, we were calculating out that we need about four inches of clearance from the left hand side and the bottom. So I'm going to bring my tool down into that general area then I'm just gonna do a couple of quick measurements with my measuring tape to make sure that I'm not too far off from that. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it should be pretty close. Y direction. Let's see how close I came. I can come down a little bit more. That's looking pretty good. I'm gonna set my X direction. That's actually pretty close. A couple small little adjustments there. Okay, so that gets my origin point. I haven't set the origin to be that yet, um, just because I wanna do a couple more measurements. Double checking my schematics here. So I need 55 centimeters width, and I need 37 centimeters in height. 
let's make sure I can clear that. So first of all, my 55 centimeters wide puts me right about here, very close to my other rail. That's great. Let's double check my 37 centimeters. Just roughly eyeballing it. Yeah, yeah, I've got plenty of clearance. I'm not gonna run into my end clamps there. So that is all good. So I'm gonna go ahead and press the XY0 to set that as my origin point. Great. I see on the display that it has now zeroed out the X and Y, but it hasn't done anything with the Z yet. And the reason why is because I still need to set my Z depth. Now, in my file, I have to remember that when I was doing the cam setup, that I opted to use my material for doing my Z balance. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and reposition to an area that I think is the biggest vulnerability for bowing inside of here. So I'm gonna say somewhere right around there that I'm going to grab my little magic dial, our little conductor here, I'm gonna to have to raise this up just a little bit. Now, anytime we're moving the Z depth, we do not wanna leave this dial in place here because if we hit the wrong direction and we come down hard on that, we're gonna regret it. So, let's bring that Z up a little bit. Now I'm gonna bring back my little tool here place the disc directly underneath and I'll start bringing my Z depth down until it's somewhat close. There we go. Then I'm gonna hit both of the highlighted green options to let it take over. So it's descending on its own very, very slowly and the second it makes contact with the disc, it's gonna use that information for the Z depth. At that point, we have set the X and Y origin, we've specified the Z depth, and we'll pretty much be ready to bring our G-code into the CNC and uh, fire it up. And there we go. Now if by some chance we are, uh, we're working late, we're getting tired, and we're not sure if we've set the origin. Well, a quick way to check, just press the green button to go back to our origin point. And we should see it be at essentially four inches by four inches as we specified earlier. That is looking pretty good to me. So, What's next? Well, we grabbed the G-code from the uh, master copy of V-Carve that we have for the makerspace here. We bring it on over on our USB key. We select it through the interface and we fire up our cut. Let's do it. Let's see if all the preparation was worth it. Okay, so we've got our ISO on the USB key ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and insert that into the interface here. I should see that lighting up nicely. There we go. And then I'm going to hit the run pause. So this is gonna allow me to go in and select the job that I wanna run from the USB key. There we go. And before I go any further, I'm gonna make sure that the area is nice and clear of any possible obstructions. There's still a step or two to go, but I just wanna be sure, just in case the job starts, I do not want to have a situation on the bed here. All right, so I'm going to go to the UDisk file by hitting the green button. Then I'm gonna go up or down to find my arcade bezel. There it is. I'm gonna select it. There we go. If I need to make any changes here, I can go ahead and do it right inside of this menu. Because the next time that I hit the green button, 
this job is going to start. Now, as soon as I do that, I'm gonna keep my hand near the stop cancel, just in case I've forgotten anything. Like for instance, uh, if there's an offset that I didn't think about and my tool starts to travel over towards one of my clamps, I wanna be able to stop it right away. As long as I keep my hand near the stop cancel, I really can't go too far wrong here, but I feel like this job is in pretty good shape. I'm going to go ahead and start it up. And then what I might do, based on the quality of the cut that I'm getting, I've got my Z plus and Z minus here, which turn into speed controls once the cut is underway. If I feel like I need to speed up the rotation of the spindle just a little bit, I can go ahead and do it manually with the Z plus and the Z minus, but I think we're gonna get a pretty decent result with the settings that we've got. My cut is ready to go. Let's do it, shall we? Alrighty guys, so we are ready to start this cut here. I'm gonna go ahead and fire it up and we're gonna watch and make sure that we are, first of all, headed to the origin point. Our spindle is coming up to speed and then we are moving to our beginning point and starting the cut. I'm gonna keep my hand on the stop cancel just in case anything goes wrong. Here we go. Now remember guys, we should see three passes here. No deep plunge for our end mill. That's looking pretty solid. Quick visual check tells me that we are indeed cutting about a millimeter. But I'm keeping my hand on the stop. You can never go wrong stopping a cut. You can always resume it. Now you see how a section was skipped, right? This is what I was mentioning. A section near one of our clamps has obviously become somewhat depressed. So hopefully by zeroing our cut from the material that will be compensated for as our cuts continue. So now we are cutting into that area. We just have to wait and see if we're cutting deep enough. From the sound of it, I can tell that the mill is making contact with our spoil board. It has a different sound from the acrylic. Okay, we're on to our inner bezel cut. You can hear how it's quieter. It's only making contact with acrylic. Looking pretty good. Okay guys, let's uh, take a little look at what we got here. Now as you can see, in this area, our cut is looking pretty good. If we look really carefully, you can see like, there's our tab right in the corner there and we've got pretty clean cuts going down here. But in a second, we're gonna see what makes acrylic so tricky to work with here. So as we round this corner and we get to the other side, look at that. We can plainly see that we have not gotten all the way through on our material there, right? So we've got this stretch where we haven't actually made contact with our spoiler board underneath. And it pretty much is almost the entire length of our material there. And why? Well, because this section is closer to our clamps, right? So with acrylic, because it is so bendy like this, proximity to the clamps 
actually cause it to, to shift enough, there's enough bowing, that we run into this situation that is so, so difficult to deal with. And we're probably going to have to do a little bit of work uh, by hand to clear that up. Now, you can see the effect because as we get further along, you can see very clearly that our cuts up on the other end here, where we've got more clearance from our clamps, are notably better. So basically, when you're cutting acrylic on a CNC, the more clearance that you can get from the edge, the better off you're going to be. We left a full four inches from the corner here, but we could have actually used even more clearance, right? We would have got a cleaner cut. As it is, we're gonna have a little bit of work to do by hand in order to clear up that faulty cut. Okay, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna use our edge cutter to get into any of these sections that have not cut completely through. In this case, I'm gonna leave my acrylic locked down and I'm gonna cut into my spoiler board here. This is going to give me a lot more stability, which is gonna be super, super important because what I don't wanna do is mess up my edges now that I've got a nice clean cut through the rest of it by messing up with my edge cutter here. So I'm gonna go nice and slowly, and I'm just gonna work my way down carefully, taking my time along a nice clean edge here. Now we've cut deep enough that uh, we should have a pretty good guiding edge to work from. So let's give it a try. So what I'm doing here is just a nice smooth motion where I'm using the cut edge as my guide and just drawing along in a nice continual path here. I don't want a lot of jerking back and forth. I never want to pull the thing if it hits any kind of obstruction. And in terms of what I'm seeing, I'm hoping to see just the edge. I'm just hoping to see a little bit of the wood of the spoiler board come through as I make my edge. I'm accumulating a little bit of, ah, uh, little bit of uh, material there that's obstructing my view. So what I might do is just grab a little blade to cut that out of there. There we go. Just cutting out that little bit of curling up material just to make it a little easier to see what's going on. Lifting my edge just a little bit just to see if I've gotten through and it looks like I haven't quite yet. So I'm gonna have to do a second pass in this case. This corner is probably the worst corner in the cut. Got a couple of tabs I can do while I'm here. So what we're looking for here is a nice clean edge. See that? Once we get this protective film off of here, that's looking pretty crisp. Beautiful, beautiful. That's pretty sharp. Now as careful as you've been, that edge is still gonna have some rough spots. You don't wanna use sandpaper on this. And this is another place where you really want to take your time. File the edges with a very broad stroke. If you use small strokes in filing your edges, there's a good chance that the corner of your file is going to catch a rough spot and tear at it. That's going to gouge a hole in your finish. We don't want that. For the perfect fit and a slick finish, 
It's totally worth all the effort. Just a reminder, guys, if you're in the Toronto area and you're interested in things like CNC milling, laser cutting, 3D printing, electronics, you should head on over to steamlabs.ca and check out all the courses available at this community makerspace. Till next time, I'm Timbot. Keep on making.